Farming poultry is an intensive farming practice. As soon as anyone goes into intensive farming, they deal with poultry pathogens on a constant basis. So extensive biosecurity measures are needed, of which cleaning is the first and foremost step in preventing disease from spreading from one flock to the next. When the house is cleaned after catching, anything that may cause disease in the following flock needs to be eradicated. There is no shortcut where cleaning is concerned. There is no one product that does it all. There are very specific steps that need to be followed to get it right to have a thoroughly clean house at the beginning of each cycle. The time needed to clean a chicken house thoroughly should be a minimum of seven days. By rushing the cleaning period, you run the risk of disease. All personnel should wear protective clothing, rubber boots and goggles. If a zoonotic disease is suspected, enhanced personal protective equipment should be used, such as gloves, face masks and headwear. There are six steps in the cleaning cycle, which are 1. Assessing the situation 2. Dry cleaning 3. Washing 4. Disinfecting 5. Evaluating the cleaning efficacy 6. Terminal fogging Step 1. Assess the situation Identify and evaluate the infectious agent suspected, its mode of transmission, potential areas affected, and selection of the proper chemical products to be applied. Identify the types of soils, which can be fat, feces and litter, protein, scale or biofilms. Identify any underlying materials that are contaminated with the soil, such as mild steel, galvanized steel, polyethylenes, polycarbonate, PVC, aluminium and electrical copper fittings. Distinguish between permanent and movable equipment such as lines, pipes and pans. Determine the exact surface area to be cleaned and disinfected. This will determine how much soap, disinfectant and fogging solution will be required. Step 2. Dry cleaning. Remove all equipment that can impede the movement of washing pipes, pumps, lines and staff. Sweep all visible organic matter and feces into a pile for a front-end loader to remove. Remove the litter which is compacted to be rock hard with spades and scrape it out. Obviously nobody wants to do this because it's highly labor intensive, but this has to be done. By just sweeping alone, it doesn't get it all out. So when the high pressure cleaners go in, it splatters all this dirt over the house, spreading whatever microorganisms are in the litter. So the most important thing is to get all the litter out. Focus on expansion joints, corners, feeder pans, potholes, cracks, mesh and cooling pads. Giving special attention to lime scale if lime is used. Remove dust from fan covers, blades, air inlets inside and outside the house using brushes and air blowers. Moisten the area to control dust and minimize aerosolization. The outside surfaces should receive the same consideration. Step 3. Washing. After the litter has been completely removed, the cleaning detergent Ultraside is foamed onto all surfaces. This is the most crucial step in the cleaning cycle. Efficient cleaning can remove up to 99% of bacteria present. However, the soap should be formulated to neutralize water hardness. If the soap doesn't foam, the water may be too hard. Now it's time for the high pressure cleaners to wash off whatever dirt is left. But first, it's advisable to do a micro-analysis of the water which should be free of all bacterial life, free of visible matter with no color as iron which makes water brown may interfere with soaps. Excessive chlorine may denature soaps. The pH should be between 6 and 8. Next, target soils. Check the buildup of calcium scale or iron usually found on the drinkers, nipple lines, even on ceilings when washing water is very hard. Use acid-based foams such as Acidet, Rock Blend or Trihydro foam products. For protein buildup, usually found on feed pans and nipple lines, use high alkalinity chloralkali, Bio-H, or high alkalinity soap such as Optimax or Optimum. Inside drinker lines, use parasitic acid-based descaler or biocide such as Trihydro. For fat, which is usually found on the walls at bird height, leaving a slimy dark deposit, Use high foam or alkalinity soap such as Ultraside, Optimax or Optimum. The longer the contact time that the foam stays on, the better its efficiency. For the foam to remain on for 10 to 20 minutes, the foam must be nice and thick so that it doesn't run down the walls. 
For heavier soils, use a lower dilution rate of 1 to 50, and for lighter soils, a higher dilution rate of 1 to 100. Use 300 mils of diluted product per square meter of area to be cleaned. The application of the washing solution can be improved by use of a low pressure 90 to 120 psi garden hose applicator. Steam and high pressure washers 200 to 1000 psi can be very effective for cleaning porous surfaces. Additional equipment needed includes a high pressure pump, mixing tank, venturi, dosing unit such as dosatron, foaming lance, high pressure lance, brooms, brushes and scouring pads. Proceed from cleanest areas to dirtiest areas and from highest ceiling to lowest floor in a multi zigzag pattern. All removables must be soaked in detergent, brushed and scoured thoroughly. Finally, rinse off the foam with low pressure clean water on all surfaces to remove any residue. All areas should be allowed to dry before the disinfectant is applied. By this time, the house should smell clean. If it doesn't smell and look clean, it isn't clean. Step 4. Disinfecting. The disinfectant is applied to eliminate pathogenic bacteria, viruses, molds and yeasts. The disinfectant is applied using a foamer to ensure optimum contact time and coverage of all surfaces. It must be applied at 0.4 liters per square meter at the correct dilution. See the label. Clean and disinfect the floor drains last and disinfect the removed equipment before replacing them in the house. Allow the foam to dry. The disinfectant does not get washed off. Step 5. Evaluating the cleaning efficacy. Only after the surface is dry must swabs be taken from the floor, walls, ceiling and equipment as prescribed on the swab monitoring sheet. Swabs must not be taken on a wet wall. The result of the swabs will establish if the house was disinfected properly. Any areas that are still contaminated need to be redone. The indicator organisms used by Mankem as a quality control measure to check that the disinfectants or sanitizers are effective are E. coli, Salmonella and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. These indicator organisms cover the bacterial range. If there was an outbreak of a disease in the previous cycle and these bacteria are not eliminated, the impact will result in high mortality, slower growth and weakened chickens due to infection by disease pathogens. A diseased chick cannot perform the same as a healthy chick, so it's absolutely essential to start with a clean house. Step 6. Terminal fogging. Finally, after the shavings are placed, the last part of the cycle occurs using fogging solution. Due to its carcinogenic properties, formalin is no longer used. Manchem has developed a chemical to fog the whole house with a pulse fogger to ensure that any remaining pathogens are eliminated. The house is then closed for 24 hours before placement of chicks. Finally, quality and service is the difference between Mankem's products and that of its competitors. Mankem's quality control is stringent, checking every batch which they produce against bacteria, ensuring every batch kills what it's supposed to. Mankem has confidence that every batch delivered does what it's supposed to do. Also, Mankem checks the dilution rate at which the products are used. This is also important because the chemicals are registered at a specific dilution rate to kill bacteria at 99.9%, .9%, so it has to be correct. Directions for use are clearly stated on the label, and random audits are carried out by Mankem to check the dilution rates are correctly applied. So in practice, the new flock goes into a spotless, disease-free environment. This is the objective of the Mankem products and their recommended cleaning process. So take more time to do a thorough job with the right equipment and chemicals and your costs will be significantly reduced in the long term because you're reducing the risk of any bacteria infecting the chickens, eliminating the need to be treated with expensive antibiotics. Also, your mortality rate will be reduced and you'll have a much healthier flock. For more information on controlling E. coli, Salmonella and Pseudomonas aeruginosa in your chicken house or more details about Mankem's cleaning products, contact Mankem directly or visit our website. With thanks to National Chicks, www.natchicks.co.za.